Sir Alex, um, how different would this book have been if you weren't still a director of Manchester United? I think it's difficult um, to do a book in the sense of the, the long period I was there, 14 years. And obviously my last book was in 1999, but 26 and a half years at the club uh, means that you have to deal with issues throughout your career. And I've always maintained that control was vital to the manager of Manchester United, whether it's Alec Ferguson or someone else, that, that control in dealing with star players, millionaires, uh, players with celebrity status, some with great egos, uh, and it, it has to be controlled in order to be successful. Well, the book is quite controlled. I mean, it's, it's, it's not like 1999. I mean, in 1999, you were quite tough on Mr. Edwards, you're the man who brought you to Manchester United, and this book, you're very nice about him indeed. Well, he's, he's, uh, there, there was only, I mean, with Martin, it was, um, the most important thing was bring me to the club and support me in the important years. He and Bobby Chan, without doubt, were solid behind me in terms of rebuilding the club, in terms of the youth side of it in particular. And, and by building the, the youth, it gave the club a fantastic foundation. But in a sense, I'm balancing the two books. One says one thing and the other says the other. Uh, I don't think it's that great that change, really. No, I don't think there's a great change. This just seems a softer Alex Ferguson than the one well, in Well, mellowed, maybe. Have you mellowed? I definitely mellowed, absolutely no doubt about that. From railway management, um, dealing with the own English players or British players is different from dealing with the players of today who come from different cultures. They're more fragile, without doubt, uh, because they come from different types of background. Uh, I think that generations and generations change in terms of looking after your kids, doing everything for them, for instance. Uh, and there's a lot to do with safety, of course. But parents drive their kid to school, they come back, they drive them to training, they drive them to discos, they drive them everywhere, bring them back. And that has a lot to do with safety, but also... It softened them up. Yes. It takes away the walking individual. I mean, I liked what you said about Dennis Law, a nasty little player, got away with underhand physicality, good at leaving his foot in, arriving a fraction late. Is that the kind of football you like? Well, I think the game is like that more than it is today. I mean, the protection of a player today is... It's, it's correct, you know, I think that because the speed of the game today and the, and the conditions of football pitches, it means you have to protect the people people come to watch. But now, the interesting thing about you is that you brought on all these incredible star players, Keane, Beckham, you know, Van Nistelrooy, and yet you fell out with all of them. Well, for those three. Yeah, and well, I think, and Rooney, in a, fa in a sense. Yeah, I think you have to deal with issues others. as they come along. I never felt with Norman. In? Yeah, yeah, it, it, you have to deal with issues as they are at the time. And you, what I say is the most important thing don't lose your control. Manchester United cannot afford players to run the football club. It's kind of, it wouldn't be Manchester United. And I say that time and time again to the directors over the years. So control is all? It's not all, but it's really, really important in terms of if you want to stay in a job, you need to kind of have to control. It sounds a bit Stalinist. Oh, Jesus, God. I know you're left of centre, but... <laughs> yeah, that's a bit extreme. No, I think that the control means the players will respect that. They know who the manager is. If it goes the other way, then they'll have a different view of the manager. And it's not a nice one. They'll think you're weak. And I don't think I was ever considered weak. Well, because I wonder whether your handling of the media didn't suggest you were weak. Weak in the sense that you couldn't take the rough with the smooth, so you banned a lot of people. You love to chuck people out of your press conferences. Well, the other way... You're banned, ban that man, and then ban the BBC. No, 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 when you think about it, um, you have no recourse with the press. They can write things that are lies. You know, many, many times I've written things that are wrong, and sometimes lies. What do you do? Report them to your, your uh, the commission? The, you know, it doesn't work that way. But you develop a thick skin. You, you seem to demonstrate through your relationship with the media a very thin skin, and yet you're a godhead. Who, who, who cares about the media? People know who you are. Yes, but the, other, the, the important thing is that there's certain parts of the media that you couldn't enjoy because they don't always report accurately. And bin them, bin them. Well, because that's what I did. <laughs> well, but, but you quite literally banned them, and now that, that doesn't yeah, speak that to doesn't, me. That doesn't speak about that, that, that freedom didn't happen of all speech the time. and all the rest of it. That didn't happen all the time. And also, which they will tell you, I didn't hold grudges.
eventually they always come back in. Well, that's true, but you held a very long grudge with the BBC because they, they, they talked about your son and there was something to talk about with your son. Yeah, I mean, right. he, was, no. he was somewhere in the furniture of the agencies that were dealing with the club and that probably wasn't a good idea. No, he, he was an agent for about a year and a half and gave up. That's it. But that's the bit the BBC concentrated on. They concentrated, and if you, if you actually watch it, it was a pure, pure documentary of paper bags and all that on. I mean, it was, it was horrible. So, but you chucked them out for seven years? Yeah. Well, they, they never tried to, they never apologised, that's your problem. But it's another aspect of control, isn't it? Yeah, but the, the, the important thing is you have to have some sort of strength of principle about dealing with that. I didn't enjoy it. I don't think it was correct. It wasn't accurate. And it wasn't honest. And that's in a way why you like the Glazers, because they've left you with control. They don't really control the club, you do. But they're supportive. That's the important thing. I think that you always appreciate people who support you. And they've been very good. And they're, they're very... Um, everything they've asked for, they've delivered. So what can you do? That's, I think it's the right thing you do. See, it's interesting you describe yourself as on the left of Labour. Um, and yet you describe them as rampant capitalists. I and I'm thinking, I know you're isn't, wrong that, isn't that a no, quote? No. no, you're wrong there. Get your facts It's not right. their fault that they're rampant capitalists. And they let me do whatever I wanted. No, I didn't use oh. that word rampant capitalist. Okay, I'm missing more. Anyway, you described yeah, well, them as capitalists. You got, you got that wrong again. Uh, let's ask that again. It's a bit, but, I mean, you're content with the, with the, with the Glazers. Yeah. But, but they are capitalists. And you're certainly on the left of Labour. How, how do you marry an admiration of raw capitalism with your politics? Because they've supported the manager, they've supported the club and all the, 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 the improvements are made. You look at the training ground today, that's down to the Glazers. Fantastic training. It's probably the best training ground in Britain. And it gives the, the club, and I said this last year, maybe it's the best thing I've ever had, is producing a medical centre. It's absolutely fantastic. But they've also produced a debt, the like of which uh, yeah, nobody would want to sleep very easily with. 400 yeah. million? Well, that was 700 million. Well, it's still a lot. Yeah, but don't forget, I mean, any takeover in business is done with debt. Do you mind the money in football? I think it's an area of... The uh, you know, party is trying to bring in, the, and it's quite right, of a financial fair play, but I don't know if you can control it. But it can't just go on like this, can it? Well, you wouldn't think so. But um, that's why I think they keep talking about financial fair play. But they're not going to get it. You've been a manager. You know the race to get the players. You know the battle with the Real Madrid, with Barcelona, all the rest of it. I mean, well, for us, money speaks. For United, we can only do we're, we're, we're the best we can. That has always been the, the bottom line. If we can get to a certain point with the player, particularly with the, the history of Manchester United and the attraction that come to Manchester United, is always huge. Hmm. That doesn't always involve money. Players will want to join the club, Manchester United, for the right reasons, for football reasons. Uh, 76,000 watch them every week. Hmm. They have a great history of winning things. Uh, they have a fantastic romance about them. And they've got a great world support. So there's a lot of attractions for Manchester United. You've always been very open about your politics. You support Labour. Uh, you think you're, I think you describe yourself as more on the Brown side of life than the Blair side of life. Would that be right? Well, I, I think Tony Blair was a fantastic Prime Minister and I loved him in question time. I thought he was absolutely brilliant. Absolutely marvellous. And uh, I've always supported whoever's been in the leader of the party and, and I do so at this very moment. And no, matter, no matter the kind of criticism we're having at the moment, and Gordon Brown was a fantastic Labour uh, minister, there's no doubt about that. So, I'm, either, I'm on both sides, really. You know, I've always supported both of them. Both the leaders? Yeah. But, and you say you certainly support Miliband now. Yeah. But when it comes to it, do you not think of, of, of Labour and two wars of choice and a banking crisis and the rest of it? If you still, are you still as loyal as you were? Always. So your upbringing. Nothing would change. No, nothing would change it. Nothing. Your upbringing's incredible. Your upbringing is an incredibly important element to who you are, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think that yeah, you should always remember your your upbringing. I was very fortunate. Working class parents who were great, both what, and installed 
has instilled in me many disciplines. Uh, and now, of course, as you get older, you may be inspired by a teacher or a great people at the Boys Brigade where I was in, my boys club. Fantastic people could inspire you. And you get older, your own personality changes. And you are where you are then. And I think that the, the foundation and the background to it is definitely the working class parents. Some people picking up this book will have thought that they were going to read something cantankerous, angry, roused about. But in fact, you're rather mellow in here. Is there another book waiting that will have the explosive edition? No, there's no book planned. But I had, a, I had agreement with Hoarders for uh, about three and a half years to do the book when I retired. And I've been working on it myself in terms of taking notes and things like that. And, and I have a good memory anyway. Uh, and the point came, it was going to come out when I retired. And that's, that's the final one. I have no plans to do anything. Sir Alex Ferguson, thank, thank you very you. much for talking to us. Thank you.